feel. It's, I want you to feel this. So why I said this conversation is going to be different, it's going to be a little bit difficult too, because we're going to try to show you and talk about things that I saw that was interesting. Cue my video, please. So you figured it out, that was for me to get hyped up. <laughs> so I've got the pleasure to welcoming the legend, in my eyes, Dr. Lisa Sue. <laughs> Welcome, Lisa. Thank you, this is like a great crowd. Is this a great crowd? Wonderful. Welcome to Austin. Thank you for coming. I tell I'm pretty comfortable with Lisa. We've we met before. A few times. A few times. A few times. And she, when I think of, and, and I got to meet a handful of you all from the audience, actually. You know what? I'm going to switch something up. See what happens when you give me energy? I change things. <laughs> you know, I was talking to a couple of people yesterday when I was walking around the expo flow about what AMD is and how it has evolved. You've been there for 10 years, and they were telling me about you, actually. Oh no, what did they say? Oh uh, well, right, come on. it sparked something that you told me a while ago, that when you started, you run to problems 10 years ago when you took Helm as a CEO. When I say to run to problems, what does that, like, what does that stand out with you right now in your philosophy? Well, uh, first of all, I have to say, I am absolutely thrilled to be here this afternoon at South by Southwest. It's an incredible honor. And I've been like super lucky throughout my career. You know, I'm an engineer by training, so semiconductor device physics, if you uh, really uh, want to know. And um, I've been in the industry for 30 plus years. And you know, when I used to tell people that I was in semiconductors, they would be like, what? Like, what's that? <laughs> Uh, and I would say chips, and they're like, chips? You mean like potato chips? And I'm like... I know that's what you were thinking, no, so don't even start. No, 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 I mean semiconductor chips, okay? You need semiconductors to power everything that you do, whether you're talking about the largest supercomputers, or you're talking about you know, PCs, or your, your car, or you know, what you have in your house. All of that is powered by semiconductors. And what is so cool today is everybody knows what semiconductors are. I think we've all realized that Semiconductors are essential, and that allows me to be here to talk to this great audience at South by Southwest. And yeah, I believe in running towards problems because the idea is, you know, we're all like working like night and day on things. You might as well work night and day on something that's really important. And uh, that's what I'm so fortunate to do is work on things that um, you know help uh, you know shape the world and yeah. make the world a better place. So. Well, I think why I showed you the video was it's not millions of people use it. It's billions of people that's run by on, on your service. Is that right? That is right. You know, I, I venture to say everybody in this audience uh, goes through an AMD chip um, a few times a day. And, you know, if you think about it, if you're, uh, if you're using Microsoft Teams or, or Office or you're on Zoom or you're on any of the Google services, you're probably running through AMD somewhere in your infrastructure. Um, if you're a gamer, how many of you are gamers in the audience? Yeah. Some gamers, yeah? Wait, wait, wait. Come on, there are more of you. You know, Microsoft Xbox, Sony PlayStation 5, um, well, Steam Deck. Well, those in that, are though, all... that, your portfolio has changed, right? And that's, that... the, that's the, to me, that's interesting because we were talking about the chips, right? You, you mentioned a couple of those names. That's right. That's right. We have just lots of stuff. Um, we're in Tesla, so if you're a Tesla fan or a Subaru fan, um, you see AMD everywhere in the ecosystem, and uh, that's what we want. We want to make your experiences better, and that's what we do. I mean, real quickly, um, you should talk about your background. You graduated from MIT, 
she's one of the few that I know. You knew you loved semiconductors from the very, very beginning in college. Am I wrong? Uh, yes, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Um, I was a nerd at heart. Uh, so I went to MIT for my undergrad. And you know, what do you need to do when you're in college? You need to find a job. And so my very first job was um, freshman year. It was a, um, I would say it was a grunt job for a graduate student in a semiconductor lab. Uh, but I got to make these really tiny little chips that were you know, the size of a dime or a quarter. And I was just amazed at everything that you could do with them. So yeah, so I was in semiconductors when it wasn't sexy. And I would say, I don't know that it's sexy now, but it's sexier no, no, than no, it no. was. So. I would say it is, because last night, I was with your James Knight. I was watching an Oscar viewing party at the Soho house. And I'm sitting there pretending like I won one. Um, and so why I was there was because you all have done a lot of stuff in Hollywood, right? We're talking about Avatar 2, a couple other movies. Yeah, yeah uh, look, I mean, it's, uh, it's so great to be working with the best in the industry, and that's what we enjoy. So when you think about Hollywood, when you think about making um, you know, these, uh, you know, these really feature films, when you think of all the special effects that are required, um, what they require is a tremendous amount of compute. And uh, you know, we were very proud to be you know, sort of really associated with some of these studios. And the idea was, how do we give as much compute as possible so that the creators can really um, accelerate you know, their rendering, accelerate all the production that needs to be done. And you know, some of the things that we've done are like, you know, it used to be that you know, the processors, if you wanted to know the processors that were in these uh, machines that were used in Creative Studios maybe had like you know eight to ten cores or something like that. That's that's as technical as I'm going to get. Uh, and and we said, look, we're going to change the game. And um, we uh, put tremendous amount of computing power in there, so you could really take what used to take you know days to render could now be rendered in hours. Yeah. And that just changes the way you can make movies. So uh, you know we're super honored to be uh, associated with some of the best. Um, you know Pixar, you know Elemental. Uh, was built on um, you know AMD uh, AMD hardware um, you know what FX um, just uh, amazing amazing um, you know capabilities um, if you think about Avatar 2 that yep. was on AMD um, so we've had just a, we just saw Planet we just saw Planet of the Apes yes, pop up yes, I just saw um, you know we saw that War is over last night won an Oscar that's what I was yeah. celebrating War is over if you don't know won an Oscar yesterday. Um, and so we have a very special guest. We decided to bring a special guest for the South by Southwest audience. Uh, David Connolly is here uh, with us. So shall we bring him out? Uh, no, not showed up. So I have, I got my hands on a first look of a, t uh, of a, a show reel that we want to show you. I'm looking for someone to share in an adventure. How am I part of this? You'll see. I know someone who would pay a pretty price for your head. The Green Knight is someone you know. Did you get a look at his face? I see you. I do not stand by in the presence of evil. I'm about to do something terrible. to die, then we will die fighting, all as one.
so who not better to come on stage after that first look <laughs> than David Conley, executive v v VFX production for Corvetta. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. How does it feel? You big, I big feel winner. Great. You big <laughs> I feel awesome. First of all, it's so exciting to be in front of so many enthusiastic people. I'm very excited to be here. Um, fresh See? off of some exciting news from last night. We won an Oscar for an animated short called War is Over, songs inspired by John Lennon and Yoko Lennon. And we did it entirely on AMD using real-time technologies to animate something that has never been done before. And somebody... So. I, and I don't, you know, when I think of AI, I think of technology, I think of industries that are changing. David, you wanted to be here when I talked to you last week. Yes. I, we, we appreciate this because I think you were at the, at the cross sections of what the future looks like. And so out of, those, out of that reel that you just saw, is there anything else that you want to add to give it to the audience? Uh, so a lot of the work that you saw, uh, there's a mixture of legacy uh, filmmaking and a lot of uh, new uh, technologies. But one of the things that uh, I want to just share very quickly, uh, I met Lisa in January of 2019, and we started talking about the uh, intersection of media entertainment technology and, and what it means to, to create art and what it means to create movies. And there is an intrinsic link, as Lisa stated in her opening statement, between compute power technology and art this uh, uh, today. And so we wanted to really leverage uh, the work that AMD is doing to help us create images that are more fantastic than we could have thought uh, that we could do 30 years ago. 30 years ago, Peter Jackson started a company, one computer, eight people, and did some work on a movie called Heavenly Creatures. Now we have over 1,800 people and hundreds and thousands of cores and computers and machines all over the world creating uh, movies like Avatar 2. And you saw some sneak peek footage there of Kingdom I, of the Eight. Yeah, so the thing that I want everybody to understand is that these images are possible because there's a, a partnership with a company like AMD that gives us the leverage and the insights, and they work with our teams and we work with their teams to help optimize because a lot of this wouldn't be possible. Uh, we would still mm. be rendering Avatar today if it wasn't for a lot of the partners here. <laughs> I have, and so you know, we really appreciate you. David, tell us a little bit about what's next. I mean, we're, you're using every piece of compute we give you, which uh, we love, um, but a little bit about AI and how do you think AI is gonna change what you do? So, uh, first of all, we use every bit of a AMD. I mean, every bit. As soon as it comes off the assembly line, we're at the door knocking, can we use it? <laughs> Secondly, um, I, want, I do want to talk about AI, and I'll talk a little bit about the future, but I want to acknowledge one thing. Uh, the use of AI in the entertainment industry is still a sensitive subject. I think a lot of people misunderstand it and don't really truly understand where AI can help us as a community. But I also want to make sure that artists understand that AI is a tool and that this is not about replacing artists. Where I see things and where I'm hoping to go is that uh, we, as an industry, have moved from GPU to CPUs, and there's an intrinsic relationship between the types of technology that AMD is, is uh, uh, working on. I'm believing that the future of, of filmmaking uh, is a partnership between passive entertainment and active entertainment, and this is where we're going to start seeing the intersection of game. gaming, visual effects, and movie making is all the same. And I want to jump from video games to movies. I want to go from active entertainment to passive entertainment, and I want to go into real-time entertainment. And that is where films are going to be in three to five years, and we're not going to be able to do that without the help of companies like AMD, where we get real-time processing and real-time mm -hmm. uh, rendering. And a lot of AI is going to help us get to that place. So I appreciate that, because I think what I'm hearing from both of you, that the creators out there and the, those who are artists, that you get to spend more time on the actual art. So I expect Absolutely. both of you all, that means it's only going to get better, right? Yeah. The, the, the production, the films, the, the visual effects? That's right. So. Part of what we need to do is there's obviously a lot of pressure to create content and create content in, in shorter deadlines. So part of the business of a duress 
uh, duress deadline delivery industry, like ours, um, is that we want to maximize the amount of time artists spend at their stations dreaming up fantastic mm -hmm. things that none, none of us can. Because I always look for the young kids, the, 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 the older people, everybody to come together and create something fantastical. I don't want them to hit a button that says render and wait for four yeah. hours or four days, or in some cases, four weeks. That doesn't help any of us because you as artists, you feed off the creative energies and this is... Where well, I appreciate you on, David. Really appreciate oh my goodness. you, man. Thanks for coming and flying in for us. Lisa, thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much. much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, David. Thank you very thank much. You. I mean, it's amazing, right? I mean, to be able to talk about this and you think about Hollywood and I also think about creators. Where's the creators in the room? Um, you know, when I think about Hollywood, we think about the creators that I hear more from this side. Um, we, we think, I think about the things that you are working on. You've got a partnership with Adobe. I remember talking to Shantanu, and they were so excited because it is all about that. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you think about it, you know, our goal in life is to get the best compute out there, whether you're a Hollywood producer or you're a content creator, or even if you're just like an amateur, um, you know, you, you like playing around with videos. Um, we give you the most compute and the lowest power. Uh, we love to work with Adobe, uh, frankly, because um, you know, they're, they're always pushing the envelope. And the idea is, again, for us, when we optimize hardware and software together, yeah. uh, we get a better product. And you're able to get, you know, sort of what you want to render out, you know, much faster. Now, you know, generative AI is the thing. I mean, I know we're going to talk a bit more about AI, but uh, when you think about what generative AI can bring to the whole content creation process, you know, this is the opportunity that we have to take computing to the next level. And as David said, this isn't about replacing, you know, creators. This is really yeah. about making creators much more productive so that you're able to do in far less time, you know, much, much higher quality capability. And that's what we do with our hardware and as well as our software partnerships. Well, and where are we, where are we at today? for those that understand it and where we're going to go in the future. Yeah, so I think the key with uh, you know, bringing AI, and really now let's think about AI over the next 10 years, is that you need different types of hardware engines. So we'll talk about you know, CPUs and GPUs, and you might even hear the term NPUs. The idea of all of these are trying to get more compute in as small a footprint as possible, so it's cheaper, faster, better, um, so that uh, you can get more done. So when you think, um, if I said AI, and you had a crystal ball, which sure is, as of right now, in, in AI. Well, Where are you making bets? I think the best thing to kind of keep in mind is uh, I think AI is the most important technology that has come, you know, sort of on the scene, you know, over at least the last 50 years. Mm. I mean, people talk about it as, uh, you know, really comparing it to the Industrial Revolution. So as much as the Internet was important, as much as, you know, uh, PCs are important, mobile phones are important, you know, AI, and especially generative AI, has become the most important thing. And, and there's a good reason for that, frankly. The good reason for that is, you know, if you think about it, you know, ChatGPT came on board, um, I don't know, 14 yeah. months ago, something like that. And it just captured everyone's imagination. Like, AI has always been around, but the ability to make AI so simple that you can just say, hey, you know, I want to know what I should do in Austin, Texas this weekend, uh, for example. Uh, that, having that possibility um, only comes with a tremendous amount of computing power. So um, I do have some show and tell. Can I bring some show? So if you think about, you know, I, I said chips were like the size of a dime or a quarter, but that was like, you know, 30 years ago. They're, they're kind of a little bit bigger now. Um, so what this is, is um, it's actually our latest generation uh, generative AI chip. It's called MI300. Uh, and it actually has um, 153 billion transistors. Uh, it has 12 little chiplets. You'll see the, the little chiplets. And we actually stack them uh, you know, side by side, sort of in a, a two and a half D, as well as on top of each other to get the most power um, in one of these chips. And why is this important? When you think about ChatGPT and how it works, it actually works with thousands of these or tens of thousands of these in massive data centers that are there uh, to really um, you know, both train and then uh, when you ask it, a question, it needs to go back to these data centers to do that. So it just gives you a sense of the power of technology. And you know, I love stuff like this. Can I, can Did you want to look at it? If you don't mind. Cool, though. I mean, I mean, one the unique one of its kind. 
uh, uh, no, 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 there, there are thousands and tens of thousands. But more to but, come. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but look, so the idea is you need big AI. So this is what I call infrastructure AI. But you actually, if you look over the next 10 years, you're going to see AI everywhere. You're going to see it in the biggest data centers in the world. You're going to see it at the edge. You're actually even going to see it in PCs. You know, um, you, know when you, you said something also. AI, I, I believe a buzzword, if many of you haven't heard it yet, for you all, is AI PC. Who's heard of AI PC before? Have you heard that word? Two people. Well, they're, they're, they're just not admitting they've heard it. Yeah, they've well, heard it. if you haven't heard it, you're going to be hearing it <laughs> over and over again. And this, I want to spend some time here on why I think many of why this is important, because that is the evolution of peace in the PC game. So when I say AI, um, what does that mean? What is AI PC first, and where, I mean, how fast is it coming? Yeah, so uh, absolutely. So AI PCs, you know, I, I talked about the data centers and going into this big iron infrastructure that sits somewhere in the cloud. But when you think about AI PCs, it's actually the idea that everyone, everybody in this room, can have your own AI capability. And you know, I'm sure that you've noticed, you know, if there are lots of people on ChatGPT, when you ask it a question, it might actually take a while. Uh, and now if you're thinking about going from you know, text to image or text to video, again, that's relying on a lot of stuff out there in the cloud. You know, the goal of AI PCs is to make sure that every one of us has our own AI capability. You don't have to go and uh, go out into the cloud. You can actually operate on your own data. You can actually ask it questions. It'll answer for you. It'll answer it for you faster. It'll answer it for you in a private manner, because maybe you don't want your data going um, everywhere. And it's just the beginning of what I think is um, the ability to make all of us much, much more productive, whether you're just doing you know, sort of your regular email, like you want to ask your, uh, you know, when is the last time I saw Ryan Patel, and what did we talk about? Uh, that's something that you can ask your AI PC, um, or you can ac actually ask it to create um, you know, new things for you if you're a creator. So um, I actually have um, another little example. Maybe uh, I can show that, Ryan, if that's all right. Um, you know, this is an example of our latest uh, Ryzen 8000. We call it our um, you know, Hawk Point uh, system. And we thought we would have a little bit of fun with it, because um, some of you may have heard of this thing called stable diffusion. Uh, what it does is it allows you to you know, write something and say, you know, uh, you know, write something in text, and it'll make it an image. We decided to have fun with Austin. So if you guys have seen Congress Avenue, you might have also heard that we have bats in Austin. And you might have also heard that you know, tacos are good in Austin. So we decided to render an image. We asked um, it to render uh, an image on an AI PC of a, of a very cute bat oh. having tacos in Austin. Uh, they're going to just run it one more time so you can just see how fast it is um, in terms of rendering. This is on a local PC. Okay? You don't have to pay anybody anything um, to run this. Uh, and um, and we were missing the salsa to begin with, so we asked it to add salsa. Oh my uh, goodness! You know some of that. Can, you know what, how? You know when you were saying this, I think for the audience too, like we're close. I mean, we're close to AI PC. Like we, like people, you we're, think we're, we're here? We're like, here. Look, th think about you know AI PCs. Uh, you can go buy an AI PC today. Like for example, we just rendered on a Hawk Point. You can buy these systems today. But more importantly, um, this technology is just going to get so much better. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's not about just you know what we do. It's yeah. about what we do together with our partners. Um, you know to unlock this capability. When you think of AI, right? I, mean, I, I want to stay there for just one more second, right? Um, what excite? You know, you talk about your excitement. What are things that we need to do as an ecosystem? Right, because I think you have been one of the few, like I've talked to other leaders in your space uh, with your partners, and it comes back to you that you bring in, no matter who it is, together to make sure that we, as a community, are moving toward the right spots. Well, first of all, when you look at AI, it is um, it does take a village, uh, you know, frankly, to put these things together. Um, we love our partnerships. We love our partnership with Microsoft, for example. You know, Microsoft has been leading the way with you know Copilot, and you know that's running um, in Azure in the cloud. Uh, we're partnering very deeply on AI PCs as well. Uh, we're spending a lot of time with some of our OEM partners, like you know HP and Lenovo, to really put together the entire ecosystem there. And then it's about the software part partners as well. So our goal is to make this super easy for all of you guys to use. And um, you know, that's the promise of AI PCs. But more importantly, that's the promise of you know, AI you know, going yeah. forward. Now, small correction. 
Uh, AMD is actually headquartered in Silicon so, Valley. Yeah, so, but <laughs> you're based, you're based it's here. It's headquartered in Silicon Valley, but we consider Austin the unofficial headquarters. Um, I live in Austin. I love living That's in Austin. That's what I meant. Uh, so the, um, look, you know, one of the things about AI that I like to say is, you know, people are worried about, you know, AI is going to replace people's jobs and, and stuff like that. That's not the way I think about it. I think companies that learn how to leverage AI are going to win over companies that are not leveraging AI. So at AMD, we want to be at the bleeding edge. Uh, we're using AI through every aspect um, of our business. We're using it to design chips. We're using it to design faster chips, make them more reliable, uh, build better software, make sure that we're able to, um, you know, really, it's, it's a productivity tool. And my goal is, I'm telling my engineering team, I'd like to, like, you know, increase the number of products we can get out every year with mm. the use of AI. Um, we're using it, you know, throughout um, our HR processes, our financial processes, um, our customer service processes. And again, this is a way of, let's call it, uh, moving up the food chain because we, we're allowing our team to get some of the, you know, less fun things done by AI so that we can really get, um, you know, higher value added for um, our employees and, and, you know, really have it more, be more fun. Well, I wanted to share that because for many people, you know, who are leaders in their companies or just, they don't know where to start, right, even to have this conversation. You feel like everyone has to have a kind of an AI strategy or just an AI ability to, to be able to talk about it, right? I, I think it's an AI strategy. I think the other thing to remember is uh, it's not like it's perfect, okay? AI is not perfect. Uh, it is, uh, we're all learning along the way. Uh, I would say that I'm personally learning. So every day I'm learning new things about what the technology can do and how do we need to shape um, our uh, entire ecosystem and our work in our, our next generation products as well. So that, that's what makes it fun. Well, you told me something when I saw you in uh, September um, that you're using it for your organizational, personal count. Uh, can, if you don't mind, oh, yeah. share, share so, that. So I, I'm, I'm absolutely using um, Copilot, and it's one of the things that we use when you think about, you know, very um, easy things to do, you know, summarize meetings, um, track action items, uh, you know, make sure that we're... It doesn't write my emails that well. <laughs> I don't use it for that, yeah. but look, we're all experimenting uh, with, with AI, for sure. Um, and then uh, we, we talked about software a little bit, but, you know, I also think that there can be some obstacles you know, when you are in these partnerships in there, like what do you think about the software? What, what, are, what are some things on the, what do you think about the industry, the proprietary approach? You know, also it is very competitive in what you do. Yeah, so certainly for right now, people are trying to get product to market as fast as possible. I mean, that's the thing about AI. This industry is changing at a pace that I've never seen before in terms of just how fast things are going. And, and as a result, you know, you want to be as productive as possible. Um, there are various ways to do that. Um, you know, AMD's approach, our approach is to have an open ecosystem. Uh, we are huge, huge supporters of the open source. Uh, we believe that, you know, there's no one company who has the answer to everything. Mm. We actually have to collaborate. So, you know, things like, uh, you know, PyTorch, you know, that, that's an, you know, excellent example of how we can make uh, machine learning and AI programmers much more efficient because you can program at one level and you can use sort of any hardware systems, you know, out there. Um, things like Hugging Face that have a set of open source models um, as well. These are very important partners for us. Um, you know, OpenAI's Triton, you know, Jax. These are all examples of a software ecosystem that is open, that's meant to really give people uh, the power of once you, you know, write software at some level, you can actually use in multiple hardware environments. Well, I spent a lot of time with the engineers, but frankly, um, I mean, we're, we're living in a, play, in a time where everyone's learning every day. So I, I've never learned so much as what I've learned over the last year in terms of uh, where technology is going. And that does help. You know, in, in our world, uh, you know, for our next generation hardware systems, we're actually making big bets, right? So the things that we're working on today, you're going to see, you know, three or four years from now. And so we have to kind of decide, you know, what's next. But that's, that's our job. We are constantly trying to make it uh, faster, easier to use, more accessible. Um, I'd like to see everybody have an AI PC. You know, that's not going to happen this year, but there's this whole opportunity over, uh, it'll start this year, over the next couple of years. I think you'll see it throughout uh, product portfolios. I'd like to see everyone have access to all the knowledge that you can get. Uh, you know, from AI that comes from making our chips uh, more capable, you know, over time and, and deeper partnerships. So, yeah, those are the types of things. And that's what I wanted you to hear. I wanted you to hear that 
this change is actually not going to take actually that long. It's coming and everyone's going to have access to it, you mentioned. I didn't really understand it until last year that this was here and that we will be, in, this time next year, but this time next year, you all at South By, many people will have this capability of, of having it and it's only going to get more. So the change is coming and hopefully you got that sense and that it is here. I also want to thank, um, so your 10 year anniversaries of this, of being at the helm is coming up, right? Uh, that's right, that's right. Um, I'm, I'm just about into my 10 years as CEO of AMD. So you think about... You. you know what? I'm glad that you all clapped because that's not an easy task. You got four billion annual revenue to more than 20 billion last year. And I can't, I mean, to be that long and to continue to push that's why I called you a legend. I know you're so humble that she won't admit it. Uh, kind of some of your insights and tips when you think about leadership strategy. Yeah. Well, look, I have to be honest. I mean, being CEO of AMD was absolutely my dream job. So if you can say that you're doing your dream job, that, that, is, uh, that is actually what I'm doing. And uh, what I really uh, enjoy about it is you get to, to really work on products that matter. And so when I first took over as CEO, you know, like any company that you know, doesn't have quite enough resources, uh, we were probably doing too many things. And it was very important for us to decide what we were going to be good at. Yeah. And what we're good at is building the highest performing um, you know, computing uh, you know, capability out there. So we're a high performance uh, processing company. Uh, that's what we spend um, our time on. And it turns out that um, that was not a bad bet because, uh, frankly, everyone needs uh, you know, high performance computing these days. The market likes you, um, and you because rightfully so. What's one word to describe? Okay, I'm going to put you in a little bit of a fast, not fast fire, but I just thought about something you said. How would you describe, in one word, your leadership style? I think I'm a doer. A doer. Well, you know, my, my view in this world is um, we get lucky enough. Uh, for, you know, first of all, I'm so thankful for the team that I have. The, uh, the you know, we have 25,000 people. They're fantastic, uh, and our goal, my goal, is to set very ambitious goals, um, and then uh, help the team get it done. So that's why I call myself a doer. I love it. Um, no, I know and, you are. Uh, I love going into the labs. I love seeing uh, what's the latest and greatest um, going on, and I love spending time with our customers and partners. And I, I called her, I asked her, I'm going to come, when I come to Austin, go see the, the office, and I did. And she allowed that to happen. Um, but while you were just talking about your employees, and hopefully I think the crowd will allow me for a minute to, I know you, you didn't ask me to do this, or you didn't ask me that this, this opportunity, but, you know, I posted some, AMD is streaming this, live streaming for all their employees globally. If you had a message for them watching, hopefully it's okay. If you had a message for them right now, what, what would it be? Well, first of all, I was walking out of my office at noon, and there was, there, was a, there was a thing of popcorn that was at the front door. And I walked out, and I said, what's the popcorn for? And they said, it's for you, because they were all getting popcorn to watch this keynote. So, <laughs> for, so look. I am, I am so blessed to have the team that we have. And as uh, we say, we're only as good as our last product, so let's get the next one done. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I got some, some questions up here that I'm seeing. Um, let's, Carrie, I'm going to read it. Um, thanks, Garrett. I'm going to give you a shout out. Uh, curious to understand how semiconductor technology intersects with energy use and our climate crisis. What topics in this space are a priority focus for you? That's a great question. Yeah, Garrett, that's a great, great question. So it turns out that to build more powerful machines, uh, more powerful compute, you actually use a ton of power. And uh, we're actually at a place where there's an intersection of not just you know, can we get more performance, but frankly, can we cool these systems? I mean, these systems are massive. They require um, a whole bunch of energy. Um, our goal in life is to build the most energy efficient systems out there. And um, that is a, a huge focus for us. Uh, we have, um, you know, pledges to reduce, you know, sort of the, the amount of power that we take in our uh, computing technology by, you know, 30x over the next five years. And, and it's a big focus for us. There's some AI people in the audience for sure. I can um, see that. What percentage of AI interference do you anticipate will happen on the edge versus in the cloud? Stefan, I think it's Stefan. 
Great. Yeah. Look, I, I think, so just for the, the audience, you know, when you think about inference, inference is uh, basically when you ask a question, uh, you, you, get, um, you get a response. And a lot of that, uh, almost all of that happens in the cloud today. And frankly, that's, uh, that's some of the latency that I talked about. It takes a few seconds for it to answer. Um, I do think um, a significant percentage is going to happen um, at the edge, whether in clients or in you know, places closer uh, you know, closer to um, your person. And it's just going to be a, a, a matter of um, you're going to see AI in all of these different places. Um, we do think that, you know, inference will uh, surpass training as we go through the next, um, you know, year or two. So that's where we see the, the AI uh, trends going. This next question, I'm going to move just a little bit to the right. Let me just see. What is Lisa's workout regime? We want to know person who comes to my house every day or every few days anyways and it's it's boxing and strength training that's why I keep distance keep the distance <laughs> through it I'm just telling you you want to that next one's good sure all of them are good yeah how, how are you I mean there's a man, man there's so many thank you I really appreciate y'all we're here for y'all how are you dealing with Nvidia's dominance can AMD catch up and I'm rooting for you I'm not saying that it says that right there Philip I see you we, we can answer anything well look uh, what I would say is, you know, AI is um, really the most important technology over the next 10 plus years. Uh, we're so early in uh, the current cycle. Um, I think you're going to find that there's no one size fits all uh, for tech. There's never a one size fits all. Um, we feel, uh, you know, we have a lot of respect for NVIDIA, a lot of respect. They've done tremendously in there from a roadmap standpoint. Um, but we also have um, a lot of confidence in where we're going. I think, you know, you, uh, we actually launched our MI300 line uh, back um, a few months ago, and we had tremendous support um, throughout the ecosystem. And you'll continue to see us uh, with AI in every aspect of our products uh, going forward. Love it. Um, I here's another one from Megan. I manage AWS's. Is that you, Megan? Hey, Megan, how you doing? Hi. See, I told you we're taking questions. So, so Megan's question is: I manage AWS Global's demand plan for GPU products. One of our big bottlenecks is chip supply. Lisa, do you see ways to increase future supply and unblock this? Absolutely. I can help you out, Megan, I promise. Uh, but <laughs> He's smiling, by the way, in the front. Big grin. That's... Yes, but uh, look, you know, in the chip industry, we do go through these cycles where uh, you know, demand is higher than supply. Uh, one thing I can say for sure is we're really good at ramping up supply. So uh, you will see uh, you know, the, the, uh, the supply for GPUs increase significantly. Um, every quarter, you know, going forward, and that's our job. Our job is to build capacity. There, there are factories being built all over the world to increase, um, increase supply going forward. And it is true. I've now been with a number of, you know, research institutes and companies where they say that they're being bottlenecked because they don't have enough compute. And every time I hear that, I'm like. That's what I'm working on. I'm working on making sure that we have enough compute uh, to, to really unlock all this creativity uh, that's out there. We want the best and brightest at AMD. So all of you who want uh, <laughs> summer internships, we're always open for AI app developers. And uh, my team will uh, definitely be uh, reaching out. So thank you. Yeah, Bear, that's what I'm talking about. Bear, nice. Hey, you know what? I like your, I like your confidence. That's the, you got to do it. You got that's. It. What is one thing that you in your career that you think you you've accomplished that you're most proud of? Wow. Let's see. So probably the thing that I'm most proud of, and there's so many, you know, sort of good, uh, you know, good products and great stories that I have to work on. But I'll tell you one, uh, which was, you know, I became CEO in 2014. In in about 2015 or so. You know, my CTO, you know, Mark Papermaster, uh, who's been my, you know, partner um, all of these years, came to me and said, you know, Lisa, you know, I think we can compete to build the most powerful supercomputer in the world. Uh, and now you have to understand, we hadn't really, you know, gotten our new Zen product line or our new Epic processors out yet, and so that was a bold thing for yeah. Mark to say. Um, he said, look, it's going to take us, you know, at least five years, and we're going to work on it. And I said, sure, okay. Uh, great, great. Let's. Uh, <laughs> I w I'm not going to put it into the revenue plan just yet, but please, uh, please work on it. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to say that today's world's fastest supercomputer is um, sitting at Oak Ridge National Labs, um, and it's called Frontier, and it's powered by AMD, uh, AMD uh, Epic <laughs> CPUs, 
and um and gpus. and you know one of my most fun things is to represent the company. and so for the opening of the the supercomputing center it's actually one exaflop of supercomputing i got to go see the computer and sign our name on behalf of amd. so that was that was a very proud moment for me. so that's that's a great story. here's another one question. amd gives a lot of influence. i'm going to read neils. thanks for the question. i'll maybe reword it a little bit. amd has a lot of influence or has going to have more influence. influence comes with responsibility. in your opinion what is AMD's responsibility when it comes to AI? Yeah, so for sure, I think all of us as you know, large companies in the you know, AI ecosystem have a responsibility. Uh, we actually have a responsible AI uh, team at AMD. It's actually led by um, our president, uh, you know, Victor Pang. Um, I think the idea is to make sure that you know, as we bring out hardware, that it is in fact secure. Um, as we work in the ecosystem, um, ensuring that you know, when you think about the things about AI that we have to be careful about, it's how you train models making sure that the data that you're using isn't biased in some way. It, it's not giving you, you know, right now, I think this, there's all this conversation about, you know, are the, are, are the models giving you the right answer? Uh, I think what we want to do is we want to make sure that the models are giving you the best answer they can. And so we do have a responsibility in, in how we implement um, you know, sort of the data that goes in and some of the models that are there and, you know, how we use the data, uh, making sure that we're very uh, protective of people's privacy um, and um, intellectual property. So those are absolutely uh, things that we take very seriously. But what I will say, though, is the answer of those who are a little bit um, worried about what AI will do, it's not, the answer is not go slower. Okay, that is definitely not the answer. The answer is to be very cognizant of some of the risks, and so you know we think about that. But uh, this technology is so powerful and so transformational. We must go faster. We must experiment and just do it with a watchful eye. Um, yes. For this last question: How is AMD pushing the limit of Moore's law from a chip design and manufacturing standpoint? Maximilian, I know you know your stuff. That's a good good question. Yeah. So for everyone, Moore's law is the idea that you can um, you know, increase performance, reduce the cost of semiconductors every two years. Uh, it's really governed the industry for the last 30 or 40 years. Uh, it is slowing down, uh, without a doubt. Moore's law is uh, slowing down. But you know, one thing that I found uh, super interesting in uh, you know sort of the the, the world of technology is um, engineers are super smart when you give them a problem. And so when you say that, hey, Moore's Law is slowing down, OK, that just means that you're not going to get everything yeah. from traditional device physics and scaling. Um, what you have to do is um, come up with new things. And so, for example, we're stacking chips. Um, like I said, we're stacking chips side by side and on top of each other. Uh, we're putting a much more you know, design capability and design software, uh, design um, hardware, software interactions. And all of those are meant to extend uh, you know, Moore's Law and extend um, sort of the performance curves that we have. So this is my favorite portion. She kind of knows it's coming, but she doesn't really know the question. So it's called Ryan is Curious, which means I, I'm just looking for one word. Or uh, What does a weekend look like for you outside of work? I like doing pretty much nothing. <laughs> this is why okay. we get along. This is why uh, we get if along. If that's okay, but actually, for for those of you who are visiting Austin, uh, you know, my husband and I will often, you know, go out on a Saturday night. There's some great restaurants in Austin, so ho- hopefully, you've gotten a chance to experience some of them. You have a favorite cuisine? Uh, right now, it's Japanese. You know, I, I love Soto. I love Uchi. I love, you know, the yeah, right now it's Japanese. Um, I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna use this one as a Ryan's curious. Thanks. I think it's Taiwu who asked, if you could give one piece of advice, so I'm going to ha- ask you to do it in a sentence if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, if you can p- give one piece of advice to Lisa in her 20s, who will be living in the AI era, what would it be? That sounds like a job, that's a job question, a career question, I think. So can you do that in a sentence? I would say, and by the way, this is the advice I give to people. I would say, uh, you know, all education is about learning to think. It's about learning to problem solve. And whether that was 30 years ago now or 30 years from now, I think it's the same. I think you know, the technology changes over time, but if you can learn how to solve problems, you're going to do great things. So I'm going to interrupt this because I think we've got some people who are aspire entrepreneurs in the room who want to make a difference in, in, in the space. Any other 
tips that you think if not just giving yourself advice, but what, what would you, where should they start? What should they be looking at right now? Well, I, you know, I think there are um, so many interesting things, you know, whether you're, uh, you're, you have a hardware background or a software background or, um, you know, other areas. I, I think that the key is to have lots of different experiences. Um, I think AI allows us to have a lot of different experiences, sure. experiment. Um, I actually like to tell people, you know, learn from your failures. Like, I've learned the most when I have completely screwed up. There were a few products that haven't gone so well that you haven't seen. We've learned a ton from them. And, uh, you know, just, just Keep learning. That's that's my best advice. Um, there is a story you told me, where you was one of, one of your lessons that you learned when early in your career. Do you remember that, what you told me? It was the one with the with the P with the PNL. Oh sheet. yes. Yeah. <laughs> she yeah, doesn't. Great. I do remember. Sorry, that. I think it's a good one. I think it's a good one. If you don't mind briefly talking about that, because I think it's a great lesson learned. I learned from it too. Well, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you two. Can I give okay. you two? You can give me two. Because you know I'll give you one if you're an engineer and one if you're a business person. Um, if you're an engineer, I can say for sure the first very very first product I worked on, I was working at uh, at IBM at the time. Uh, we announced the product that day, and I can tell you, nothing was working. Like, nothing was working. Like, the chip wouldn't turn on. Um, those are scary times when that happens. And uh, what it allows you to do is just rally the team around. Uh, like I said, engineers are super, um, are super innovative and creative. When where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. So, uh, and then the one that you're talking about, I told Ryan this story. So the very first business I managed. Um, I was uh, like I was an engineer turned business person, and uh, no offense, but I thought it was going to be relatively easy. <laughs> I didn't think there was going to be a big transition between engineering and business. So for the very first business I managed, uh, I literally missed my first annual operating plan by 50 percent, like 50 percent, and I was devastated. Like my boss told me, Lisa, you're terrible, you're awful. How could you do that? And I said, you know what? He was right. I could have done better, and so uh, I learned from that. I learned, I, I learned how to ask more questions next time, uh, but more importantly, um, every one of these are learning experiences. And I appreciate so. you sharing that, because I think people don't see that side of that. You, you know, we've all made mistakes. We've always, how do you learn from it, and how do you get better, and obviously, you still recall it, right? It's still... Oh, yes, <laughs> remember those, those words, for sure. <laughs> to, to get better. Um, we've got two minutes left, so here's my thing. The future of AI is blank. I'll give you a second to think about it. The future of AI is? Mind-blowing. Mind-blowing what we're going to be able to do with AI. You heard David Connolly say that he has been able to create things that he hadn't expected with computing itself, but computing plus AI will take that to an entirely new level. So. You know, and you also mentioned, you know, you're an engineer and, and you've, you know, there hasn't been too many people who transitioned to be a great leader. And I will, she's so humble, she won't let me say kind words in the back, but I'll say kind words up here because she can't do anything because I'm still here. Um, you wanted this conversation when we talked, when you asked me to be here, you, you wanted to give something back to the audience. You wanted it to be different. You wanted people to feel how technology and innovation is, is not just the future, but how we need to come together. So I give kudos to you and your team allowing me to roam around AMDs, everything that I could get my hands on, the entertainment industry, which is really huge, that I think you all are changing the game. But also, for you, again, I'll repeat this. Lisa and AMD, at least for me, the ecosystem that you built that we are together, we're building together and staying ahead of the curve is just inspiring, um, I think, for all of us and just as entrepreneurs and folks in the room. So I appreciate Lisa. I can't, I can't thank you enough. People, Dr. Lisa Sue. Thank you. 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 I'd like to do things. Yeah, I, t I totally.